housekeeper puts a stop to her employer's behaviour once and for all. Our moment in crime is the case of Dora Kratochville. There was only 20 minutes left of the 25th of June 1954 when a young woman entered the offices of the Newcastle Herald, a local newspaper in Newcastle, New South Wales, Australia. Her name was Dora Kratochville and she needed to speak with one of the journalists, Sidney Crossland, urgently. Sydney and his wife, Bridget, aged 45, had moved to the Newcastle suburb of Merriweather 12 years earlier from the mining town of Broken Hill. They had an adopted nine-year-old son called Peter and Dora, aged 29, was the family's housekeeper. Dora had moved to Australia in 1950 from a displaced persons camp in Germany. In the 1950s, many immigrants in Australia were employed as labourers and domestic workers. Dora lived in the Crosslands home and had been employed by them for 18 months. That June night, Sydney happened to be out of the office when Dora showed up. Unable to speak to Sydney, Dora informed photographer Archibald Patrick Miller that something bad had happened at the Crossland home. Archibald had a journalist called Scowcroft drive himself and Dora to Hill Street in Merriweather. The front door to the home was wide open and the dining room lights were on. When Archibald stepped into the dining room, he saw Bridget Crossland dead on the floor. Detective Constable Edward Healy attended the scene. Bridget was wearing a dressing gown and lay on her back. A scarf had been tied around her neck and a pillow lay over her face. Close by was an overturned glass, half a bottle of beer on a tray and another bottle of beer on the table. There was no sign of a struggle. Detective Sergeant C.B. Williams spoke to Dora in the living room. She was in tears. When she was able to catch her breath, Dora said she did it to free Sydney and to stop Peter from turning into his mother. Dora had killed Bridget. Life in the Crossland household wasn't easy. Bridget was struggling with alcoholism and became violent when drunk. To make matters worse, Bridget was convinced that Sydney was having an affair with Dora and she would regularly accuse Dora of this. Sydney and Dora would sometimes discuss Bridget's alcoholism. Dora believed that the dependency on alcohol was causing Bridget to neglect Peter. What were the sequence of events that led to Dora killing Bridget? Bridget would sometimes spend time at the Criterion Hotel. It was there at around 5pm the day before the murder that Bridget met Robert Stewart, a sailor. His ship, the South African Star, was docked in Newcastle Harbour. Bridget gave her name as Briddy and Robert invited her to a party on the ship. After giving Robert her phone number, Bridget returned home. At 10.30pm, Dora answered a phone call from Robert and Bridget then took over the call. 
Bridget arrived at the South African Star at 10.48pm and spent the night in Robert's room because, according to Robert, he couldn't find a taxi to take her home. The next morning, Sydney asked Dora to take Peter to see a 5pm movie. Sydney had not seen his wife since the day before. When Bridget arrived home, she told Dora not to take Peter to the cinema, but Dora chose to carry out Sydney's instructions. After the film, Dora took Peter to visit Sydney at his office. Sydney asked if his wife had returned home, and the conversation soon turned to Bridget's alcoholism. Dora mentioned that she had seen Bridget earlier that afternoon at the Criterion Hotel, dancing with three men. It was later on that night that a fight broke out between Dora and Bridget. When Dora and Peter returned home, Dora discovered that her bedroom was in disarray and that her bed sheets were wet. Bridget had ransacked Dora's room once again, looking for proof of an affair between Sydney and Dora. Dora would later say that her actions were not premeditated. An argument broke out between the two women and Bridget grabbed Dora by the hair. Dora pushed Bridget to the floor near the fireplace, prompting Bridget to call Dora names. By now Dora had lost her temper and she grabbed a yellow scarf that was hanging on her bedroom door. Bridget did not fight back when Dora began to strangle her with the scarf. Dora was charged with murder days later. Dora's trial began a couple of months later after an inquest had taken place. Dora had apologised for what happened at the inquest. Sydney told the inquest that Dora was a hard worker and that she was good with Peter. At the trial, four neighbours, three women and a police sergeant gave evidence of Dora's good character. Dora wept throughout the trial and the judge, Justice Maguire, said he felt sympathy for her. On the 23rd of September, the jury deliberated for one hour and 30 minutes before finding Dora guilty of manslaughter. The jury recommended mercy under the circumstances and Dora received a four-year sentence. Sydney would go on to be the Federal Secretary of the Australian Journalists Association from 1955 to 1980. In 1981, he was appointed a member of the Order of Australia Medal for services to journalism. But very little is known about Dora's life after her imprisonment. Adora Kotochville died in 1995 at the age of 70 and is buried in Wurunara Memorial Park in Sydney, but it's not 100% clear if this is the same Dora who served time for murder. This case shows just how quickly everything can change when a split-second decision is made.